for me, it's kind of like I have all these pieces that I've sorted out. And now it's it's more a question of how do you put them all together to uh, create a, a, an understandable system that then can be presented to the world and this kind of a thing. But a couple of days ago, I had a real major insight. It really showed the particular mission of the philosophy of freedom in the world today. If you're in this kind of work, what you want to do is be aware of what the needs of humanity are and then what you can do to try to meet those needs of that current time in history. You want to understand what the problem is and then you want to be able to present it if you have something to offer to be able to meet that problem which I think we do with the philosophy of freedom. But then, okay, what exactly is the role of the philosophy of freedom? Several things had come to my attention in the past week. The one was a, a tweet by Elon Musk. He tweets out, the woke mind virus is either defeated or nothing else matters. Elon Musk and many others understand the seriousness, you know, woke ideology has to civilization. People who have, are capable and have taken a deep dive into the postmodern philosophy that underlies it and, and what a threat that is. A response came by a person who said, we are either in a mass awakening event or total collapse of society. Now, people who do take a deep dive into this can understand this, except the one element that maybe isn't so easy to explain and understand is that we're either in a mass awakening. Okay, now, what is this mass awakening? Pretty easy to understand the collapse of society from some of these ideas yeah. that reject all the enlightenment principles like individuality, reason, you know, the whole enlightenment that led to a lot of progress. But what is this uh, mass awakening? I came across this article, the meaning behind woke mind virus explained. This is somebody explaining what Elon Musk meant when he said that. By talking about woke mind virus, Musk is implying political correctness has gone toxic and will ultimately lead to the demise of civilization. Merriam-Webster defines the term woke as being aware of and actively attentive to important societal facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. So when Musk talks about the woke mind, he's referring to all the people who claim their politically correct beliefs are right, as it is only they and like-minded people who truly recognize society's problems. Musk uses the term virus as a means to denote how an idea can quickly spread in civilization. He is comparing the spread of an ideology with, for instance, the spread of COVID-19 during the pandemic or leading people to think in a certain way, perhaps incorporating the idea of a zombie virus. You might relate it to a zombie virus is that people, when they take up this ideology, they seem to lose a lot of normal mental capacities. To understand what I'm talking about, you really have to take a deep dive into the origins of woke ideology and uh, just what it means and what it is and how it affects our culture. And, and it's a whole big, it's a whole big deal. I did a series of videos. These are on the website philosophyoffreedom.com under the culture war where I did five videos where I took a deep dive into this. This was around uh, 2017 when this was first, people were first putting out the warning about this ideology. So, so I got curious and, and really looked into it deeply and produced the origin of the culture war, the culture war of human nature. It's really based on a, a different understanding of human nature, which is a, a very Woke ideology is based on a very materialistic view of human nature, that we're just a product of our environment, product of our culture. They reject the idea of any kind of a individual spirit. The culture war to unify the people. A fourth video, winning the culture war with a science of freedom. And uh, the culture war reaches Waldorf education. What is the threat? How serious is the threat? So here's a video about from Jordan Peterson where him and, and many others have read Putin's speeches. If you read Putin's speeches, he's very clear that he considers the woke ideology of Western culture as a real threat to their civilization and values. That the Russian leader frequently speaks of his country's role as a bulwark against the moral decadence of the West. Putin 
regards the current West as decadent to the point of absolute untrustworthiness, particularly on the cultural and religious front, he is certainly able and willing to use the story of our degeneration to make his people wary of us and to convince them of the necessity of his leadership and to unite them in supporting his actions in Ukraine. Basically, what he's saying is that one of the motivations for Putin to invade Ukraine was to stop the Western decadence of woke culture from moving into uh, getting any closer to Russia and their civilization. That's just an example how serious people take this threat who have done a deep dive into uh, how it is a threat to civilization. He's willing to go to war to stop it. Now here's another video uh, warning about the, the seriousness of what's happening to the youth who are taking in these ideas. I think the greatest generation was just that. I think the boomer generation has some issues. Gen Xers have a little bit more. Millennials have a lot more. Gen Z is going to have way more. And it's just this cascade effect of generations getting worse and worse and worse. I fear that for all, for all the issues we can complain about with boomers, when the boomers are, are gone, it's going to be apocalyptic. You're like we, we need that level of stability among them, despite the, 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 the criticisms the younger generations have. Same thing is true for Gen X. Millennials are a psychotic generation. It's split down the middle between woke insanity, and then you've got classically liberal to conservatives countering that. Gen Z is going to be crazier. Alpha is going to be crazier. These kids who are addicted to these machines, who have no sense of family, who, who, who don't know their dads or, or haven't seen their families because they've been raised by the state, when they get in the vote, I think the system just implodes. So here, there's a lot of concern about the youth that are being educated under critical race theory and a lot of these ideas at the universities, they're becoming very stressed out, very aimless, very lost. They, they no longer have the traditional values that young people used to get in families and such. People who have taken a deep dive into it understand how serious the threat is to civilization, and they're willing to go to war over it, just like we, we were willing to go to war over communism. In other words, there's, their only solution is extermination, which is then going to end up in a very bad situation because the other side often feels the same way, that there is this very huge divide that's developing. And one side is accusing the other side of being the N-A-Z word, which you can't say on YouTube. So they're both accusing the other side of being the ultimate evil. And where that leads eventually is to war, you know basically exterminating the opposition. The issue is, how do you deal with this problem in a way that we don't annihilate each other? Is it possible? And this is where the philosophy of freedom comes in and has a unique role, a unique contribution to civilization, is because within the philosophy of freedom, this woke ideology has a place. It has a significant place and a, a significant role for human development, though it may not be what you think. I believe it can be redeemed and be turned into something very positive. But as I say, not in the way you might think. And I I'll go into that now and how this woke ideology can be redeemed and turn out to be a major positive for, the for human development. I'm in Truth and Science. This was produced by Steiner before he wrote The Philosophy of Freedom, and what it contains is kind of an introduction to The Philosophy of Freedom. It starts out under Master of Conduct. It says, if the ego has really penetrated its deed with full insight, then it feels itself to be master of its conduct. When you fully know why you act, then that's where you find freedom. It depends on knowing which is cognition. So then he says, thus, the process of cognition is the process for the development of freedom. Human freedom is developed through the process of developing cognition. And another important point in self-development, it says, to transform the unfree realm into the realm of free activity is the task of self-development for every individual as well as the task of humanity as a whole. Okay, so he's saying that the path 
to freedom is the path of cognition, of developing cognition, and that path of self-development consists of transforming an unfree realm into the, a free realm of activity. Okay, so what does that mean? We look to the philosophy of freedom to understand what that means, since that article was an introduction to the philosophy of freedom. And within the philosophy of freedom, you can find that it can be broken down into different topics, that there's a certain organization, a thought organization of the philosophy of freedom that breaks it down into different topics. And this has been the subject of our study of the philosophy of freedom, is to understand this breakdown, the this system, this, these different topics. And what we discovered is that each of these topics can be understood as a description of a cognition process. Now, why is that in the philosophy of freedom that it's all about cognition? Well, we just read that the path to freedom is the development of cognition. So it makes sense that the philosophy of freedom would be about the development of cognition. And we can find this in each topic within the philosophy of freedom, where each topic, this is where we came up with this cognition diagram of Rudolf Steiner's understanding of cognition, which moves from a case one, the undeveloped state, to a case two, the developed state. And this can be found in each topic within of the many topics within the philosophy of freedom, this layout. It's a comparative study between a case one and a case two. It's a comparative study of a case one undeveloped state, which Steiner describes pretty much in each topic. And then he describes the developed state, which is the result of uh, an advancement in cognition by conscious active thinking. Here's an example in 3.1, which is chapter three, the first topic, where you move from case one is he describes the everyday state of just thinking and perceiving in a more passive way that is outside our activity. And then in case two, we move to the exceptional state through the observation of thinking. So we move from a case one everyday state to a case two exceptional state. In uh, chapter three, the third topic, we move in case one, we're talking about expressions of personality, which is then advanced to a selfless contemplation of object. It's a selfless personality that just observes the object to gain knowledge of it, rather than it just being a mere refreshing thoughts about our personality where we actually don't gain any knowledge of what we're observing. So that's an advancement in cognition. And in, in chapter four is another example of how it can be applied to this cognition diagram. It talks about generalized relationships, then moves to a more advanced cognition of conceptualizing an event. That's just an example of how each topic moves from a case one to a case two. So let me move on to the next point, which we find that this case one of the undeveloped state in the philosophy of freedom is basically woke ideology. See, woke ideology was developed by very intelligent people that really had an understanding, a deep understanding of the human being, just like Steiner has an a deep understanding of the human being, except these people had a deep understanding of the undeveloped human being, and they celebrate that because they weren't aware of the free spirit, that there's another aspect of the human being they were blind to. So they celebrate the natural human being of our natural undeveloped state, and they articulated it very well so that many people identify with it. They're able to make a, a large movement out of this because people say, yeah, that's the way I experience life, and they relate to it. So what this means is that the case one in the philosophy of freedom is the woke position, and the case two is where we need to advance to. So what that means is that the, the woke ideology can be redeemed very clearly. What it also shows that in the philosophy of freedom, it is about conscious development. So to achieve the advanced state, you need to first become conscious of the natural state. And what the woke ideology is con contributing by bringing consciousness to the natural state of the undeveloped human being. Most of us are in most of the time are in this state, but we're not conscious of it. We're just going about our life unconscious to what particular state we're in. 
which when you become conscious of the state, it puts you in a position to advance then to the next conscious state, which is the advancement of cognition. So it's a conscious process. So that's the contribution to make. And here I'll give it, give you an example. And this, this is a video that I made that gives examples of, I've listed out all these main ideas of woke ideology in this video. And then I showed how they're, they are the natural state and how in the philosophy of freedom, it shows to advance from that state to the next, next state through the development of cognition. I'll play this video. In this video, I will go through the philosophy of freedom chapter by chapter to contrast the critical social justice view of the human being with Rudolf Steiner's view of the human being. The view of the human being according to critical social justice has gained the following because it gives a simplistic description of the most visible aspects of human nature that many people can relate to. These common human characteristics express our well-known undeveloped state, but there is more to the human being that requires more effort to recognize. The concept of the human being is not complete unless it includes the free spirit as the purest expression of human nature. Critical social justice theory does not include an understanding of the human free spirit. This is why it is a materialistic view of the human being. The cognitive and ethical states of critical social justice theory are found throughout the philosophy of freedom because Rudolf Steiner uses this as the starting point and then advances to higher levels of development. For example, in chapter 14, Individuality and Type, it begins with a description of a person who identifies as a member of an ethnic group. How the single member is constituted and his general behavior will be determined by the character of the ethnic group. If we ask why a particular thing about a person is like this or like that, we are directed away from the individual person and toward his group type. The thoughts and behavior expressed by someone who identifies as a group member are determined by the group, which directs us away from their unique individual characteristics. From this starting point, chapter 14 advances from group identity to learning how to recognize a free spirit, our true self. It is more difficult to identify unique individual characteristics because you have to get to know each person individually. It is the same in each chapter of the philosophy of freedom. Each chapter advances from the undeveloped, immature human being understood by critical social justice to the mature, free individuality. So the point is, this movement can be redeemed, and it's actually providing a contribution to humanity by bringing consciousness to this case one state. I mean, if you look at the big cosmic plan, it's, it's playing a a necessary major role to bring this state into consciousness just so that then we can redeem it through the development of cognition and that's the that's the path to freedom as i said earlier the path to freedom is that by transforming the unfree state to the free state so these descriptions of the woke ideology that uh, that appear in the philosophy of freedom that is the unfree state and the path of development is to transform that unfree state to the free state through the development of cognition every topic within the philosophy of freedom does that so that's really good news we don't have to have a war and blot it out it's serving a purpose we just have to redeem it and transform it and that's really the role of the philosophy of freedom because this advanced state, this is not natural. So you're not going to naturally stumble onto it just through the course of life. It's not natural. You have to learn about it. You have to learn the concept of the free spirit. You have to learn these ideas. And then you can transform yourself if you have those concepts.
if you have that knowledge, then you can transform yourself. Otherwise, it won't happen. And the way you find that knowledge is in the philosophy of freedom. I mean, it's not like it's all in the philosophy of freedom. What's in the philosophy of freedom, you can find other places. But it's, you know, it's very neatly packaged in the philosophy of freedom as a whole, whole description of the free spirit, which is this advancement of cognition is the way you get there. This is the, the philosophy of freedom's contribution to the, the big scheme of things. It provides the possibility of the redemption of, you know, you might say our natural state that needs to be uplifted, needs to be really awakened. That's its contribution to humanity, is knowledge of this redemption process of the lower state. So that's really our task is to bring this to the world, make it available, make so they can be under, presented in a way that can be understand to redeem this lower state. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a major, you know, what's what's happening in Ukraine is going to happen everywhere. As this, in fact, you know, the Ukraine war could spread into a major World War III, which is which is largely rooted in this culture war of the clash of uh, civilizations, in a sense. That's the danger we're facing. What Steiner wanted was this to be developed as a science of freedom. We need to be very specific, very clear about these states and turn it into a real science of freedom or maybe a, a science of cognition even. 